Stephanie J. Block is a two-time Tony-nominated Broadway powerhouse that has won the hearts of audiences in shows like Wicked, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, Falsettos, and more. Her illustrious Great White Way career kicked off in The Boy from Oz, where she took on the role of a theater powerhouse, Liza Minnelli. Now she's gone full-out star in The Cher Show, learning how to own her confidence both on stage and off. Watch Block talk about the deep dressing room talk she had with Cher, her new eff it attitude, and more on this week's Show People. Stephanie J. Block. Yes. How the heck are you? I'm tired, probably just like you. <laughs> but we're good, right? Don't worry about me. Come on. You are giving it every night at the Neil Simon Theater. <sighs> Neil Simon share. I love I love how these things get merged. Yeah, I know. And Stephanie J. Block. Come three on. things I never thought would all come, be working. It doesn't seem like they'd work on the page, but somehow <laughs> it does come together. You came on Show People many years ago when you were doing The Mystery of Edwin Drood. Yes. And you talked at that point about how you were still tired from the Pirate Queen, a little <laughs> flop from six years prior that ran for three months. Correct. If you were tired six years later from a little run like that, yeah. I can't imagine, you are now like five months into the Broadway run yeah. of the Cher Show. And I would say it's equally as taxing, just in a different way. Just different. Yeah, okay. it is, in the sense of the expectation from the audience, which luckily, a lot. hopefully, it's heavy. Her it's fans happening. are serious. They are loyal. Every night when I pop up, you never quite know what you're going to expect. And I'll say the backstage life is very complicated to the uh -huh. show. So there is no rest. If, you know, I'm on stage for a good chunk of it, but anytime I'm off, it's not checking the emails and, you know, using the bathroom. It really is doing costume changes, wig changes. And so it has been a different discipline in the sense that now old girl you know the vessel is old different girl. the old body is a little that. different <laughs> so these costume changes are monster and the weight of the costumes are monster the so, actual weight yeah so literally weight. and figuratively i feel like there's a lot on my shoulders mm -hmm. luckily by the end of the show they're giving what we have given mm -hmm. and so it's very reciprocated mm -hmm. and i'm grateful for that which for pirate queen sadly it was not we right. used to go and the crowd goes mild because they were <laughs> <laughs> Even with all that river dancing? <laughs> Honey, it was a tough road to hoe. <laughs> Is this a hard one to come down from at the end of the night? Interestingly, yeah, I do stay awake. Uh, I feel like my metronome slows down on the drive, you know, back home. But back to in, Jersey. Back to Jersey. Good Jersey but, mom. Yeah. But putting my head on the pillow, that doesn't happen and probably until after midnight, one o'clock. Are you like watching? Um, yeah. I eat a full meal. I come home and oh, really? I eat a full carbohydrated meal. Wow. Um, and poor Seb does the same because he sees me and he's like, oh, well, let's eat together. So we're eating together. And then That's we'll, nice. we'll watch Bastion's an episode. Eating late with he you? stays, he stays up. He'll either put Vivian down, sleep for an hour or two with her, and then regroup and then meets me at the door. He meets you at which door? Like the door of the house. Yeah, the you, door you come is home open from and Cher. ready to go. You come yeah. home and he's ready and he's I up text him for and you. say, I'm about two minutes away. And there he is at the door with the dog. Oh. Come on. And I've been to your home. We did a video shoot at your home, yeah, actually, you did. with Susan Blackwell. With yeah, your for Thanksgiving. Falsettos co stars. <laughs> yeah. And it's a lovely home. Thank it's, you. It's a, look, I love that you have that. I do too. And that must have been a huge change for you to get all that yes. comfort at home yes. and the family life. Necessary, I think, now. New York City is my jam. I love her so much, mm -hmm. but I was living on the island for, I don't know, 14, 15 years yeah. and just thought, I think I need to leave her to still love her. And so <laughs> we did that. And now I still, still love her. And I can look at her at night and be like, oh, I'm going to be in you soon. But yeah. it's really good to be like way over here. <laughs> I love how that turned out. <laughs> That, that whole sentiment. So back to Cher. Yes. It's weird that she now knows who you are. I assume she wasn't at the stage door of all your seven previous Broadway credits. Nope. Like she's sort of like new to you. Yes, she is new to me. I know there was a, a, an approval process. I can appreciate this now, but she entered the rehearsal space, 42nd Street, you know, studios, mm -hmm. with this gorgeous velvet sort of fedora slash sombrero hat, these <laughs> reflective aviator sunglasses, <laughs> with about 15 people around her to love her, support so her, So not a low-key entrance. Not low-key. Everybody knew she was um, there. And she came, I would say, about 
a half hour before the rest of the people that okay. were going to see that yeah. presentation were there. Mm -hmm. She wanted to meet us. She wanted to settle in. And it was brief but important. Mm -hmm. So she met me before. You hit it first. Much I mean, to my chagrin. Previously. Yeah, I hit. Yes, you had. I really did. I just thought, you know what, in order for me to present what I've rehearsed for the last month and do it truthfully mm -hmm. and kind of unaffected, because I know myself, and if the tides shift enough, mm -hmm. I can and will probably bring that to stage, and mm -hmm. I just didn't want to. So I was kind of self-preserving my own self. I didn't have the fedora and the glasses, so I just hid. And um, I was summoned. My producer, Floaty Suarez, said, you know what? She really does want to meet you before. Mm -hmm. So I came down from the seventh floor or whatever right. and met her, and she was lovely and gracious and said, look, I know what this takes. I know how vulnerable you have to be. I know that you know that I'm sitting five feet away from you. Um, Thank you, essentially. And with that, she kind of just released, I think, herself and mm -hmm. us. And we watched her in the sense that we could see tears coming down mm -hmm. her face and we could see her grabbing the hands of mm -hmm. her voice teacher and her PR and her management team. Yeah. And But we didn't quite know what that meant. We didn't know if it was breaking her heart or if she was proud and pleased. And then a couple weeks later, we got the call that, you know, she loved us and we, she wants to move forward. And then Chicago came around. Um, we were in rehearsals, and then we went into full production, and she visited us. And it was three days, yeah. and it was much more of and a... it was intense. It was intense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we found out that she was going to be into th in the audience, yeah. and then we met her immediately after down in a rehearsal room and lots of input for the show. Then Broadway started, the rehearsal process, yeah. and we were only getting information from our writer Rick Ellis and our director Jason Moore. There was kind of no hands-on, personal hands-on. Then she came two weeks before opening. So we were already up in production and performing for 1,400 people right. every night. We thought we were delivering a show that we were really proud of and wanted her to be proud of. When she sat in the audience for the first time, we all knew she was there. You know when she's there. Of it course. really is just an Not energy. Just the hat, the Correct. Energy. The energy changes, and people's, no matter how quiet you want to keep it, whether it's the yeah. ushers or the doormat, it just, it's a, it's a shift in the room. And she then up and left without speaking to us after. We knew she was emotional. We all got text and messages saying she was very overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And we had to put it in context, you know, the, the um, Malibu fires were hitting. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, a whole lot of personal mm -hmm. stuff were also happening in her right. life. She lovingly came the very next day and while we were in rehearsals, told us where she was emotionally mm -hmm. and mentally, and then proceeded to say, to me and we sat in my dressing room for about 40 minutes and there was a lot that was shared um, stuff that I'm happy to share as well but also stuff that I want to keep personal but at a certain point in the conversation going back to what you said that she kind of had no idea who I was because yeah. you know I'm a spec in the in this huge world that Pause. she two-time Tony nominee well, in this 30-block radius, I rock it. <laughs> but if you go beyond that, even in the boroughs, it's touch and go. Um, but to her, you know, she didn't know who she, I was. Yeah. And I just said, I admire you greatly. I've studied you for now a year. But I want to let you know that I am an actress playing a part. I haven't studied you my whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for anything from you. I'm not looking to like fly into stardom because I am playing you or to ride your coattails. Wow. I'm a mom and a wife and I've been hired to play this role. And there was a huge Interesting. in my room. And all of a sudden then she, uh, we shared a bottle of water. We sat on my couch in my dressing room and the conversation changed. And I think that was important oh, for me and for her. Yeah. Um, I'm sure people expect a lot of things from her. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't one of them. I was just happy to be doing what I was doing. And I really wanted her to feel safe and to feel like I'm not looking to take from her at all. Yeah. I'm hoping to help lift up and, and love her in my own way and in the portrayal that we're trying to give at the Neil Simon Theater. That was it. And it really did change. Oh, amazing. And it was scary, but I think it was something that I kind of had to declare on my own and interestingly enough on my home turf right, right. in my theater sure. in my dressing space i don't know if i would have had that voice somewhere else mm -hmm. wow i know love that. what a great moment we're going to talk more about share and stephanie j block when we come back
are back with Stephanie J. Bach, currently slaying as Star in the <laughs> Cher show. How does it feel to play a character named Star? You're it's not kind playing of Cher, fun. you're playing Star. I know, and it is fun. It's really fun. <laughs> so let me tell you what I love about this performance and what I'm I think gonna a listen lot like of, this. and I told you this when I saw it, but yeah. I'm gonna tell everyone. I think everyone has been kind of floored. And the reason why the theater community has really gotten behind this performance is because we're all kind of like, wow, she's. She's really nailing the share moments. But then you give it this humanity and you get the opportunity within that to actually tell the story of this woman. You're giving just enough. It feels like such a fine line that you're walking, Thank but you. you're walking it beautifully and it just feels so effortless, but we all know it's not. It's really amazing. And obviously we've all seen many men play share over the years. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure when you first got the call, I know you kind of resisted in the very beginning. You weren't yeah. immediately like, yes, that's my dream role. Yeah. I want to play Cher. Right. Do you owe anything to like the Chad, Chad Michaels, Michaels of, the of the world? Absolutely. Who's a very famous. In fact, I reached out to him and then we were conversing via DM on Twitter and okay. Instagram. Okay. And he said, you're going to find the joy when you're trying to learn her. Because I said, throw me any tricks, so like quick tricks. So early on you reached out to Chad. Early, early on. Like even when we were doing the, um, the workshops. Okay. Are you, and a, are you a RuPaul's Drag Race viewer? Did you know? Now I am. Okay. Because once you watch one, it's like, <laughs> it's like uh, is it Lay's potato chips? You can't eat just one. Once you watch one, then you're yeah, in it. Yes. I did fall in love with him. And not only because of what he would bring to his share, yeah. but he was also one of the kindest human beings on that show, yes, right? His yes. generosity of spirit and stuff. So that allowed me to be like, well, maybe there is, if I open the door a little bit, maybe he would actually respond. Mm -hmm. um, and he did, but he was not necessarily willing to give me the quick fixes, the mm -hmm. just add water, stir, and you'll get share. Mm -hmm. So he really just said, work, and you will find the joy in finding your share. It did take me a long time. I think there were some things about me innately that Jason Moore saw, one of which, thank you for saying humanity, but that is one thing that he also said. He said she really has this beautiful fine line of being this otherworldly creature. However, and I've said this before, you feel like you know her somehow. You right. feel like you can approach her and say, hey Cher, what's up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And he said, there's something about you when you're on stage, you can sing a song in a way that allows us to kind of see your guts. Mm. And we kind of need that mm -hmm. through all the sequins and the wigs and the noise that's gonna be around you, the production value around you. We need something that's gonna root this. And he goes, and I really think that could be you. And then I was scared to death because of, you know, the, the Liza experience, which was right. a great gift to me, but a huge challenge. Yeah. Well, you also have worked really hard to build a Broadway career. We know you can sing. We know you can act. Yeah. We know you can, you can tell stories on stage, but you have to make the right choices. Yeah. And I won't even ask you, I will say it. This was a huge risk. Yeah. I'm assuming you have seen that the Broadway community has completely gotten behind this. I feel so blessed that that happened, because yeah. you're right, it could have gone yeah. either way. Um, I do like to say yes to things that scare me to a certain point, mm -hmm. and I do like to surprise people. I never want to take a job that's going to mimic or uh, kind of follow suit as to the job I did before. Mm -hmm. And so I can remember <laughs> finishing the workshop of Cher, and then a week later, you know, being in Brigadoon going, there couldn't be two opposite <laughs> sides of the spectrum, right? right? But I find great joy in that. Yeah. I know a lot of the community when the announcement came out that I would be attempting to do this role, that it was like, huh. <laughs> but that also fueled me yep. to work really effing hard and yeah. to say, uh, I want to surprise you and I hope this is terribly unexpected and yet somehow on the other side of it, you know, have people saying exactly what you're saying. And I did not know. This has been, a, the word expectation has been huge for me in this last year. Mm -hmm. And I've had to re release it of myself, release of what other people are expecting of me, and just be like, stay laser focused on what you're doing today. Stay laser focused on the performance right now. Stay laser focused. And that has been exhausting and yet really uh, freeing mm. at the same time. Because mm -hmm. if you're starting to think, whatever, four months down the road, or what you think you might get if this goes your way, ba, ba. the weight is just too heavy. Right. Do you know what I mean? If right. it goes wrong, then you feel like you're losing all of this stuff as opposed to 
well, that song didn't go well. Let's pick myself up and sing another one type mm -hmm. thing. And on top of it, we knew you were talented, but it was also like, hi, meet my abs, meet my breasts, meet my thighs. They're like, you're meeting more of me I now. I know. I've you never, you knew even me. in my 20s, I never had to do that. I remember playing Ziegfeld's favorite in Branson, Missouri <laughs> with Pat Boone in my 20s. Will Rogers Follies, I'll good role. Will Rogers fun Follies, role. Will so fun. But even still, like, you know, I'd have this sign and these legs and the community in Branson was up in arms. So I even had to wear clothes to cover all oh, that up. so your showgirl so, moment correct, wasn't even a showgirl moment. Correct. So this has been the most <laughs> revealing I have ever been in my life. And it, again, it really was, I looked at Sebastian and I was like, if I'm not doing this now, when am I ever going to be asked to be, you know, a pop goddess ever again? It was mm -hmm. a big risk. Yeah. Um, and now on the other side of it, it's beautiful and freeing. And I'm just so glad I said yes. Are you slightly more just sort of like loose Feisty. about your body now? That is and... correct. Yes, I am. Yes? I love it. I love it. <laughs> How does that uh, come out in your life now? Well, I mean, I don't feel, there. I was never ashamed of my body per se. Mm -hmm. I just always kind of would look to the other person and be like, I don't have, or I wish I mm. had, or I'm not really, and then fill in the blank. And now I, the comparison I just had to drop, even the comparison with Cher, in a sense, I had to drop. Yeah the measurements will never be hers. Right. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So I had to embrace what I had, and I am very happy in doing that. And whether it's a, a photo shoot where I, I, I used to be so floating above myself saying, are you holding that in? Is mm -hmm. anything showing that, 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 that this is my good side? It's now a real, it's a real fuck it attitude. Yes. And whatever you capture, you're going to capture, and hopefully it will be beautiful and freeing and because I felt like the more I started to constrict and compare, the less I was showing of me. I'm now, <laughs> again, literally showing more and showing more than I ever have in my life at my at 46. F it. F it. Yes. I'm Cher, bitch. I actually have a little <laughs> a little makeup case somebody gave me. I have a lot of Cher stuff. A, a lot, lot of Cher stuff. I love it. Um, and it's been really fun to get. And some of the some of her catchphrases are amazing, you know, yeah. and really great mantras yeah. to tell yourself. Yeah. Okay. We'll be back with more of Stephanie J. Black and her <laughs> attitude after this break. <laughs> Back with Stephanie J. Block. Hello. You still here? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have me tied down. I am glad you brought up your effort attitude because w one thing I love about having this job for so long mm -hmm. is that I love interact interacting with certain performers over the years mm -hmm. and sort of seeing them over time and watching their careers change or watching their lives change mm -hmm. and sort of seeing how they change. And you are a great example of that. You are so comfortable in your skin you are such a fantastic person and you just feel like so like you just own yourself so much now thank you compared to the girl i met during boy yeah. from oz and, yeah. and so when you look back on the journey and how, how, do, how does it feel to be at this point i think the word journey although cliche is very right for yeah. me nothing has ever happened quickly or mm -hmm. easily for me i am a workhorse i always have been I think also being a wife, being a mom, it releases a lot of things mm -hmm. and a lot of things that I used to just focus on and, and really go crazy over. But there is now a world around me that I am consumed with, which is my daughter, which is the state of our planet, which is some heavier issues yeah. that um, the art form now has really become a beautiful release and kind of a sanctuary for me as opposed to <gasps> a breathing heavy, mm -hmm. I got to, it needs to, um, that word desperation that I've used before, it's, I'm no longer desperate in that sort of mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. You also interact with people beautifully on social media. I love people so I much. I think it's difficult. <laughs> it's very yeah. difficult to sort of... Um, Find a tone on social media yeah, is very hard to Yeah, put the right amount of energy out and to be able to react to things. Yes. And you do it really well. It's you, right? It's not a team. No, it's me. You don't have like a team of millennials in a closet I do typing not. out your tweets. I do not. And I think <laughs> um, 
the, the few that follow me, uh, they laugh because I think they can feel a sense of authenticity through my social media. Yeah. I'm the first to say, I don't even know what that means. What are you talking about? You know, <laughs> um, I like sharing just enough mm -hmm. to have people feel connected, but I don't release everything out there for other reasons that I just feel like there needs to be a little bit of protective. Because when, when I started in this business, mm -hmm. there was no sort of online chat space or Facebook or right. so that sort of connecting with the audiences just happened at the stage door yeah. and now that we have this sort of uh, vehicle to reach out to people well beyond you know the stage door it's an interesting thing to balance but I dig people so much and I remember what I would have given had you know, somebody reached out to me, like a Cheetah Rivera, mm -hmm. after I saw Spider, Kiss of the Spider Woman, yeah. or somebody to have that connective tissue and just say, I see you, I appreciate you, you know, good luck on that performance or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for saying so. I really do embrace the fans. Well, let's talk about that beautiful daughter of yours. How is she? She's amazing. Yes, what she's, is she into? She, oh my God. Well, she's loving the dance scene. Okay. But So we've put her in ballet, but it's not like, you know, form and position. It's all about <laughs> free dancing, and you grab your colored handkerchiefs and just live your best <laughs> life, and she does. Um, but I like to say I have three kids, and her name is Vivian, because <laughs> she does not stop. <laughs> She's not one that's just gonna sit and play Play-Doh for 40 minutes, you know? Um, she will play Play-Doh, but then she's also going to be reciting a poem that she's making up all the while, <laughs> singing a song and wondering what we're having for lunch. And I mean, she's just a life force. Is my this child. her first time really processing what you do? Yes. And, uh, yeah. and what is that like? And what does she think of it? And ha what has she seen? Has she seen? We have massaged her into it because <laughs> when we, I went full bore and would like FaceTime her good night as Cher. She did not like it. No. <laughs> she saw me as Cher in Chicago, and she said Cher has taken Mama, and it was really a hard. By the way, thing if you ever want to FaceTime me, good night as Cher. <laughs> I'm totally in for that. <laughs> totally in for that. It's, a, not, it's not cute to see it that close up. I'll tell you. It was a lot. So she likes when I'm me and wearing the costume and rehearsing as me. Okay. She likes when I'm me and I use the voice. When the whole package comes together, <laughs> it's too much for her. Okay. She finally has seen like the first 15 minutes of the play from the back row, and she'll wave and she'll Aww. smile and she'll embrace what's happening on stage. Uh -huh. But when she comes backstage, it needs to be off. Okay. Yeah. I've tried to tell her, you know, when you put on your Moana costume, it's the same thing as Mama putting on Cher. You're not Moana, <laughs> you're just VV being Moana, right? I just brought this up today to someone. How good was the filming of Falsettos? I went to see it in a movie theater and I like lost my mind. So did we. It was and so beautiful. James Lapine is a genius in the sense that he's worked in both mediums, so he knows. Yeah. And we all thought him to be a little crazy when he was like, you all have to drop it down. I need you to look at camera four when you d wow. at least deliver that wow. line. Wow, he really, so wow, he really did that. And we fought him a bit in the sense that we wanted to be purist mm -hmm. and bring the show that we were doing every night mm -hmm. at the Walter Kirk to, but he was like, Stephanie, I promise you, you're going to want to just not cry that hard or you're not going to want to mm. deliver it with that intensity because it will not translate on the screen. And then when we all saw it, we thought, it was he was beautiful. exactly right, and we felt really proud of what it ended up being. You all went to the Tony Awards. It was fantastic. Oh, my God. We still we just did a text thread, I think, yesterday, because Christian has a new television series. Uh -huh. Andrew's pushing his book, yep. which is hilarious and wonderful. Yep. And then Brandon is out there doing Burn This. I, I mean, know. the whole cast is I really know. hasn't stopped. Anthony is a grown person. How did that happen? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for award season this year? Um, how, how do you prepare yourself for that madness? I got to be honest, I don't quite know. I've never been in a long running show and had a nomination to know what it's like to do both. Oh, so I'm not you. quite sure. I don't want to put the cart before Edwin the horse. Edwin Drood and Falsettos were both done That's by correct. the time you got into awards That's season. That's correct. Good luck. So I think, <laughs> you know, I think the share show is going to be around for a while yes. and they keep releasing bo blocks of tickets, which is great. Yep. Um, I can't speak to what the season's going to be because no nominations have come out yet. Right. Um, but it will be, if it happens, the first time that I do family and show and the madness that is, the madness and joy that is award season. You can do anything. Dun 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 d
we're out of time. Okay. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank I, you. I adore this performance, and I love everything that's happening to you. Thank you, Paul. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. So everyone, go see the Share Show. Have you please. not seen it yet? Go see Idiots, the Cher show. come see our show. And please FaceTime me as Share just once. I would love that. You're asking for it. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.